The Nirvana Wars was the battle between Courtney Love, Dave Grohl, and Chris Novoselic about who owned the music of Kurt Cobain. Cobain died in April of 1994, leaving a litany of popular music behind. And so the question was, with Cobain gone, who gets to own the rights to that music? Some might think his wife, his spouse, Courtney Love. That's where the money usually goes in a situation like this, right? But what about Kurt's bandmates, the guys who actually helped make this music? That's Dave Grohl and Chris Novoselic. Shouldn't they get a say in this too? Well, after Kurt's death in 1994, the Nirvana Limited Liability Company was set up. And basically what that does, it gives Grohl, Novoselic, Love, and Francis Bean Cobain an even four-way split of revenue earned. And they get to discuss and sort out any various issues that may come up with Nirvana's music and stuff like that. But it was in 2001 when this battle really began to heat up with all sides going at it. So, with the LLC agreement being set up, that meant everybody got an even split. However, Courtney Love always contended this, stating that since she owned the Cobain estate, that she should get more. And she also stated that Cobain only shared the record royalties with his bandmates Grohl and Novoselic out of kindness. That's what she said. And she had made up her mind that she was not happy with that Nirvana LLC agreement, and she wanted the whole thing to be dismantled. Grohl and Novoselic said she was doing this because she couldn't stand not getting her own way and she was just an attention seeker. Love, however, contended that she was still in a real bad way after Kurt's death and she regretted ever signing that Nirvana LLC agreement. She also continued to speak badly of Grohl and Novoselic, stating, I don't think they like each other that much. Of Novoselic, she said, I just see him as a third phase drunk freak who needs to be out of my life. He contradicts himself at every turn. Nothing he does is productive. But it wasn't just Novoselic she was heading out at either. She really got stuck into Dave Grohl too. I've never written a song about him, so I'm going to sing you one right now. Okay. When the drummer tries to sing, everybody better hide. <laughs> when the drummer tries to sing, God, let's all go inside. Oh, yeah, all of you that love all things food. Dave, I have to tell you, Kurt hated you. Grohl and Novoselic sat down with Rolling Stone in 2002. Nirvana was never about celebrity, says Grohl. It was never about fame. It was never about that. It was based on music, and after Kurt died, that was all you had left. Novoselic stated, She's just going to hit us and hit us and hit us and hit us. And if people want to believe Courtney Love, I'm not going to convince anybody of anything. She always needs to grandstand and make these exaggerations. Ever since she came on the scene, there was always this stuff going on, and this drama, and this and that, and it's just like, it's draining. Another point of contention arose when there was talk of a Nirvana box set being made. And along with that, the release of Nirvana's final song they made in January of 1994, and that was You Know You're Right. So Love, Grohl, and Novoselic went to court over the release of this material, and the judge simply upheld a clause in the LLC agreement which stipulated that no unreleased material can be released without the unanimous written consent of all three members. So, in other words, all three, Love, Grohl, and Novoselic, had to agree on something for it to go forward. And since they didn't agree, at that time there was no box set released and You Know You're Right was still being held up. One of the main points of contention was that Love thought the song would be wasted on a box set and it would be better suited to a single disc collection. And eventually, in late September of 2002, Love Grohl and Novoselic released a joint statement announcing that the lawsuit had been settled and that You Know Your Right would be officially released on the Nirvana Greatest Hits album later that year. 
In January of 1994, after You Know You're Right had been completed, Novoselic took the masters of those recordings home with him, and he kept them in his basement until 1998. The song was given a final mix in July of 2001, although Novoselic stated that the final mix does not sound significantly different from the way it sounded when it was recorded in 1994, with the most dramatic changes being the addition of compression and reverb. And the song was released on the Nirvana Greatest Hits album, which came out in October of 2002, and here is my copy of it. I got it on the night of release. Me and my friends went down at a midnight store opening and they actually had this and the Foo Fighters one by one record being released at the same time, so I got both of them. So it was good that Love, Grohl, and Novoselic could finally come to an agreement to get the song released. But disputes over the box set still went on. However, with the agreement coming over the release of You Know You're Right on the Greatest Hits album, this seemed to kind of pave the way for the box set to be released, and it was released in November of 2004, titled With the Lights Out. It arrived over three years after its original release date, but it had more music than had originally been promised, including an acoustic demo of You Know You're Right. All in all, the box set contained three CDs and one DVD of previously rare or unreleased material, including B-sides, demos, rehearsals, and live recordings. So while it seemed things had smoothed over a bit for the members of the LLC, it wasn't necessarily that way. No, even with the box set and You Know You're Right behind them, the feud continued. Specifically between Love and Grohl. Here's Courtney Love in 2011. You know, but when people come to me and say, I love Nirvana, I wasn't in Nirvana. However, I do own Nirvana with my daughter, and because of tax laws, I have to give the money to the sister, Kim Cobain, and Wendy Cobain. So I don't understand what I was saying is, Dave makes $5 million a show. He doesn't need the money. His, father's a, his mother's a banker. His father's a stockbroker. And um, he's making $5 million a show. He's, making t he's in the food fight. He's making a fortune. Okay, so don't f***ing tell me that the food fight, you can go like them all you want, but don't say you like them in front of me, or I will walk off stage, and I will never come back. I don't care how much more popular they are, because Dave knows that I know, that he knows, that I know, that he f***ing knows, that I know. Because Dave knows that I know, that he knows, that I know, that he f***ing knows, that I know, all right? So he didn't write one f***ing note. He didn't even write the drum riff and Smells Like Teen Spirit. Kurt owns 100% of that publishing. Forget me, I make tons of money. My daughter, my mother-in-law, Kim Cobain, QND Cobain, and Brianne Cobain. That's what I care about. Okay? Do you understand? So f*** Dave. So even all those years later, the feud between Courtney and Dave was still just as hot as ever. It was stated that the two of them even had problems back in the Nirvana days. However, in April of 2014, after at least a 20-year long feud, Courtney Love and the two surviving members of Nirvana, Dave Grohl and Chris Novoselic, finally ended their feud. And this all came about where Nirvana were being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The three took to the stage together and Love and Grohl embraced. Mr. Grohl, come on, David and Chris. Finally, the feud was over. That's it. I just wish that Kurt was here to he feel this and be this. 20 years ago, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame maybe wasn't. But tonight, he really would have appreciated it. He would have appreciated Chris and Dave and Michael and his mother and his sisters being here. And just a few months after the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in November of 2014, Courtney Love was on The Jimmy Kimmel Show. She stated that everything between her and Chris Novoselic was cool and reaffirmed that everything was cool between her and Grohl as well. 
we we used to really like each other, and then there was 20 years where we sued each other. So. Right. <laughs> right. And then we stopped. And so now you are Me socially. And Cole, we're totally tight. You are. Wow. I know. It's 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 kind of a good thing. And I mean, look, if you can like give up a grudge like that, because there was a lot of crap that went on, um, I think anyone could do it. So from this. So f Dave. To this. That was a massive turnaround indeed, and it is good that it happened because they all had one thing in common, and that was their love for Kurt and the music. And it was good that they all finally saw that, and things were able to continue on good terms. Because at the end of the day, something really tragic happened with Kurt dying, and it's just not worth all that fighting after such a tragic thing had occurred. But there you go, guys. That was the Nirvana Wars, the 20-year long saga. It finally came to an end. And so thanks, guys, as always, for tuning into the video. Be sure to leave us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, consider becoming a channel member. There's more information on that down below. And we'll catch you on the next one, guys.